G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Subnautica with Mags and welcome back to the island. Yes, yeah, since our base, as it turned out, or our spawn point was so close to the back of the Aurora, this seemed the logical first place to go. There is multiple objects we need to scan here. We're not going to be building a base this time. We do have things that we want to collect. We do have things... Turn our light on a moment, we're starting to get dark. Uh, we do have things we want to collect. We want access to the rooms. The reason why I wasn't able to build a room for a multi-purpose room in the last video to actually start sticking stuff inside of is, well, because I don't have it, I've got to find a place to scan it. And this seems as good a spot as any. So I have spent the time to build a sea glide, which we are now going to turn off because I don't want to waste its power. And we'll flick over to the flashlight. And we're going to come up on the island at night time. Now this is going to be interesting because the first time I boarded the island last time I was attacked by crabs. So, let's see if the same thing happens again. Now, things that we can scan here. At the moment, I still don't know what any of this flora or fauna that we can scan actually does. If anything at all. It could just be fluff, but... It's worth actually having a look at it, worth having a scan of it, just in case there is something we can do to it at some point. Jaffa Cup. Picking up multiple faint energy signatures. Okay. Oh, that looks nice. The moon just wandering past as we're exploring the island. God, that's got a close orbit. Or well, we're orbiting close to it. Either way. Um, there's something else here we can scan. This. Now, I am going to sit back at some point and go through all the fluff on all the items. I may even do it towards the end of this video and see exactly what we come up with. Because I am curious. It seems odd that these would all be scannable items but to have no purpose within the game. Careful not to fall in the ocean here. The island is only accessible at this point from two points, both on the far side. So if I fall off here, I've got to go back under the entire island or around it and start this whole process again. Now, obviously, I know my way around the island here, unless they've changed it. Ming plant? There seems to be more scannable items here this time. I don't recall there being this many last time. Bulbo tree? Down to 85% power on that. How much have I got on that torch? 81. I have a spare battery for the sea glide that I shouldn't need, so we should be good. And yeah, it doesn't look like they've changed it at this point. Uh, that doesn't need to be scanned. We do need to scan this. Now the lantern trees we are going to take a sample of before we leave. I know there are pots that I can recreate up in one of the observatories. If I get a sample of this, I can start growing it, and this will be the first food source available at my base that I won't have to go hunting for, which will make survival much easier. It's not growable. There doesn't seem to be any crabs around this time, which is odd. All right, marble melon plant. Chinese potato plant. And the exterior grow bed, which we won't be needing. We need interior stuff because our bases will be built under the ground. I'm not planning on any surface access anyway. New blueprint acquired. Mm -hmm, very good. So that's one down. I heard that. That sounded like a crab. Where was it? They chirp like birds. Now, wherever it is, it's not right here. Uh, living wall? So this will get us all the parts we need to actually start expanding our base, and we really, really need these bits. At the moment, I can only build corridors and a basic access along with solar panels. Bulkhead? Boom, we've got that. New blueprint acquired. There's one. Alright, wrong one. Come here. Where'd you go? Where did it go? 
I stabbed it so hard it went through the ground, I think. Well, I'm not going to say no to that. Multi-purpose room. This is what I was looking for. Right, with this I can immediately start expanding the base. So we'll quickly grab everything on the island as fast as we can. We have two observ uh, observatories to check out. New blueprint acquired. Abandoned PDA. Now we've read these in the New last video, these PDA ones, PDA so... I won't worry about that. Cave crawler. Ah, the spider's body must have gone inside. I assume that's it. Yep, that's it. I've got a rock inside here. So we can't get in there. Oh, we've got the sun coming up now, so that means we can save some power. if I can find anything else through these walls. I thought I saw a spotlight that I could scan in here before, but... Get up on top. No, it's not going to let us go that way. Okay, fair enough. I'm not going to let us go through there. Oh, it's because there's glass still on that part. Now, I remember working out last time that whatever this wreckage came from actually came from a base that was here, or from a ship that crashed here before the Aurora did, which is why this place is so beaten up. We drop in on top. We can get in the end at least. And that's how we get inside. All right, we'll open the supply crate. What have we got? First aid kit, which we could actually use. That gets back to 100%. Take the ladder down inside. And we have another supply crate which has a battery, which is useful. Spotlight. I thought there was one in here. I don't know where exactly that is. Is there anything else inside here? We have the PDA, which we can take, and we'll use the ladder to get up and exit out. So that is all of this location done. Now we are going to stop over and grab some of these plants too while we're at it. We'll grab a feed. I'm not going to grab the samples that we're going to take now because they will decompose before we get back. There's a section of the terrain there I can't walk up. But I am a little hungry and thirsty, and these things solve all those problems. Yes, alien planet, alien wildlife, not evolved for human consumption. First thing I do is stick it in my mouth. There we go. Alright, so, we have two observatories. We'll go for that one first, it looks like it's the closest one. This will take us up past the lagoon area that I built my base in for the last playthrough. Now this... Um, no. I don't think that's actually the right way. We've got to go past this and up and around. Uh, a little bit of jumping here in order to get ourselves up. I'm keeping an eye on the scanning icon as well to see if any more of this wildlife is actually scannable. Yeah, this is a spot we need to get up on. That'll get us up to here. Now, the archway wasn't the spot we built on. I think we built further that way last time. Whoa. Yeah, this... Uh, the character walking animations and the character the character's clipping when on ground walking around is still not perfect. You get lots of bounce back. Like there. And I'm bouncing back off the terrain. It's more designed for... Oh, hello. More designed for when you're swimming in the water. Pink cap. Now, I'm not grabbing samples of any of these at this time, even on the ones that I'm, I know I can, because, again, I don't know what they are, but I know where I can pick them up. Speckled Rattler. I 
I'm sure they will have some use at some time. They have to. You wouldn't fill your game with stuff like this and not have all of this useful. The Aurora off in the distance. Just happened to land in a spot that was shallow enough that the most of the ship could stick out of the water. I think we should be alright. Spotlight on the ground. Alright, so we have a Marble Melon Plant Pot. So take the Plant Pots. Do plant Pot 2. They both look different, so hopefully that's Plant Pot 1. Blueprint acquired. And it doesn't appear that I can scan it, so anything else up in here? No, we have the observatory though. And we take the observatory. PDA and none of that is scannable as far as I can tell. So that looks like we've cleaned everything out here. New PDA data. Now we've got to get over there. Preferably without me killing myself. Would be really useful. I don't think fall damage has been implemented in the recent, most recent patch, but uh, it would be embarrassing to find out that it had the hard way. Alright. Sprint over this way now, and this path should take us to the top of this observatory. We can grab whatever is inside here, and at this point we can get the hell off the island and go back and start expanding the base. Now I need that base expanded out enough to hold all of the resources that I need in order to build the more advanced suits. Now, as people pointed out in the comment sections, uh, I try and avoid spoilers, but that I missed the radiation gloves. I did find them as soon as I logged in. I have no idea how I didn't see them to be... Well, no, 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 you stay up there. No idea how I didn't see them in the first place. They have been collected, which means I should now be able to freely explore the radiation zone. This means I can swim straight to Aurora and see whether or not I can find the plans for the prawn mech suit, which will make the deep dive stuff a hell of a lot easier. Although I don't know how the prawn mech suit actually handles oxygen at this point. And... We have some water, so we'll take that and a PDA. Integrating new PDA data. An indoor grow bed. That is far, far more useful. That'll be my first multi purpose room, I think, right there. Uh, fern palm. Acquired. And while we're up here, we'll grab a few more of these. And just quickly munch down. Alright, and yeah, let's neck the water while we're at it. So, while we're here, voice logs, photo albums, data bank. Alien life forms, flora. So, acid mushrooms, we know them in the water, they're for batteries. Blue palm. The blue palm is common, a common aquatic plant, thrives in the shallow waters with high exposure to sunlight. Long fawns intercept the light before it can travel to the smaller flora on the seabed. Bulbo tree. A bulb-sized flora with roots in the ground sprouts. Turquoise animals suggest sap produced by this plant is poisonous to insects, but can be harvested and consumed by humans for its high water content. Well, that's interesting. Chinese potato plant. Chinese potato is common throughout China territories where synthetic food is still... Stigmata, there is remain large tracts of arable land which grow fresh produce, genetically designed prior to the expansion. This plant is highly adaptable to different environments and a staple of new colony colonies galaxy-wide. Creek vine we know, fern palm. Specimen first identified as an artificial grow bed on Floater Island. It is not listed in existing flora databases. It is unclear whether or not it is native to this planet. Genetic code shares some features of other local plant life, but this may not be the result of DNA transfusion rather than natural evolution. The plant usually contains thick, protein-rich sludge at its base. This may suggest carnivorous life cycle wherein grubs and insects that are attracted to the bright petals make their way to the centre of the plant and are unable to scale back to the leaves and ultimately digested. 
So like a Venus flytrap. Jaffa cab. Common land fungus found in clusters grows quietly. Size is limited. Only available nutrients in space. Lantern tree. Yet we know the lanterns. This plant collects water from the air rather than relying on its root system and produces large fleshy fruits that are both edible and have a typically high water content. So this is worth reading through. Ming plant, hardy specimen which grows on land, vase-like trunk protects the root system, self-repairs over time, and character crashing at its side. Pink cap, land-based fungus species, harvestable spores, inedible. So it's harvestable, but you can't eat it. No list for what it's actually for. Brittle land plant containing large spores, which generate a characteristic rattle when the plant is shaken. May act to ward off predators or even encourage predation as a means of spreading spores. Voxel shrub, pink leaf plant with angular appearance, which grows exclusively on Flutter Island. Withering weed, well adapted to shallow waters and cave systems, this plant... Lives in symbiosis with corals. Okay, that's one of the water ones. All right, so we need a sample of the bulbo tree and a sample of the lantern tree. Um, marmelon, marmelon, bolo, and lantern. Those are the three that I want. Now, first things first, before we do that, I need to know... What are the requirements for the indoor grow bed? Two titanium, and the multi-purpose room requires six. I've got both of that back at base, so... Grub basket. All right, so we have to grab these down at the bottom. If we can get one of the bulbo tree samples to grow in the indoor grow bed back at base, we'll have a water supply as well. At least that's what I'm thinking at the moment. Saves having to go and get all the stuff for different disinfected water as often as we'll have to otherwise. So if we drop down this cliff here... And yeah, I'd say fall damage is definitely, definitely off. Yep. Chinese potato plant, we got the Ma Melon. Take two Ma Melon samples. And we'll take two Lantern samples. Um, I don't know, the Bulbo must be up the other observatory, so we may have to come back at another time, but we are now on a timer, because these will decompose. So we need to make the fastest way back to our base and build that. Uh, build the room and in the indoor grow bed as fast as we possibly can. Otherwise, these will not grow. Um, we'll take this tunnel. And this should do nicely. And pull the sea glide and we are gone. It is really deep here. Again, I don't know whether or not they've moved the Reaper Leviathan swarms, so I am a little nervous about going through these areas, because it's quite possible this could actually be a, Re a Reaper Leviathan area. Now, it would make sense why this island is so close to the spawn zone, and such an easy way to set up your survival if they uh, set it up so actually getting to it was potentially deadly. Well, I'm not hearing anything, so that's a good start. All right, one quick battery change later, and we are now back at the base. So, put the sea glide away and swim straight up into the bottom. The clock is ticking. We need two, three, four, five, six, and then two. That should be enough. Drop straight back out the bottom here and torch away. We need the multi-purpose room, which we're going to build. Uh, actually, no, we won't build it off this side. to deconstruct. We'll swing back over this side. We want to build the multi-purpose room on this side so we get a nice look at the thermal vent as it's doing its thing. And we've built... Ah, we've built solar panels. Alright, we will have to build it on this side. That's right, I'll adjust that later on. Go 
off the end, that's not going to join. That'll work. Not ideal, but that'll work for the moment. For the start of the base, it needs to expand out anyway. So we build that one. And quickly rush inside. Welcome aboard, Captain. Ah, uh, not... Uh, keep hitting the flashlight. And, 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 and. Appliances, indoor grow bed. Let's build this one. Right there. Alright, so put that away. Left mouse to use the planter. They're old, but they're not dead. So, good. They didn't have to decompose mode. So we now have two marmelons and two lantern plants. This should grow and bring up a supply. And we're going to actually set this room up as a feeding room or a, uh, a, a farming area. So if we put, we have no more titanium. Or do we? Do we have more titanium in here? We do have more titanium in here. Lab equipment. I have no idea what the lab equipment's for. I'm gonna change that button at some point. All oh, right, we'll put a second grow bed here. it's just ready to go. Now, what does it take to build pot plant two? Just one titanium a piece. So if we go... And we'll build... Actually, we'll build a couple here. Place one on each side. That will work. Now let's take all of the quartz. And we should have the plans for glass at the very least. We do, we are, we gotta do conversion for it first. All right, so we gotta swim that back up to the escape pod. While we're here, put that away. How much more do we have? One, two, three, four, five. No more quartz inside. That's a shame, because I'm actually going to need more. Right, so we're going to do a little bit of exploring here, because it's going to take... It's two quartz to make one glass, and then two glass to make one window. It's often easier to actually spot the quartz at night time because it glows. Don't ask me why the quartz glows, it just glows. Alright, so after a couple of minutes of hunting around, we grabbed up the resources we needed and a few things extra. So to save us having to go back to the pot all the time, we picked up what we needed for a fabricator, so we'll mount this one right here. We still need more power attached to this place, but we still got to find the uh, thermo plant for that. But that gives us a fabricator inside of the base, and if we come through, we can now place some windows. So we're going to go one here, I think for the moment go one this way and I think we've got enough left for one more actually we'll do this corner here as well because we're not going to be expanding the base in this direction the idea is this section here will be all glass and this which I believe we've even got the we've even got the titanium for right now but we're not going to worry about it is going to expand out in this direction now the end goal here is to expand the base out alongside the thermal vent and then we'll be able to run ourselves down into the vent itself. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Next time, before we actually continue expanding this base, we have enough here at this point. My plan is to head over to Aurora. We have the radiation gear. I have a sea glide to get around. We're gonna go see if we can find the parts to build ourselves a prawn mech suit. Until next time, dive smart, dive safe, and I'll catch you in the depths.